and today I'm here to share with you my top 10 favorite books I read in the year 2014. As stated, these are not books that were necessarily published in the year 2014, but were books I experienced for the first time last year. Coincidentally, many of the books that made the list, though, were indeed published in 2014. Before I get started on the list, I think it's important to know that this was a very important year for me as a reader. The last half of the year, I decided to prioritize reading critically and reading diversely. But I'm in a constant struggle of finding balance between reading for pleasure and reading critically because as I've stated in previous videos, I get a certain amount of joy from reading a book quickly and finishing it. And I found that the art of reading critically requires you to take your time. So this list primarily consists of books that made me feel good and that satisfied me at the time of reading and aren't necessarily life-changing books. I'm hoping that in the years to come, my list will consist of influential books that will change my life forever. That being said, I enjoyed all of these books and I have no shame in saying that they were books that I enjoyed purely at an entertainment value for the most part because there are all kinds of ways to read books. Now, on to the honorable mentions for 2014. The first honorable mention easily goes to Animal Farm by George Orwell. This is a book that definitely suffered from me reading it too quickly. I think I read it during a readathon, but it is a beautiful piece of satire that even if you don't know the historical background, you can still get so much from because it is incredibly relevant in today's society. My second honorable mention goes to All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, and it pains me not to have it in my top 10, but I haven't had time to properly process this book yet because it was the final book that I read in 2014. It is a beautiful piece of literary fiction with beautiful prose and a beautiful story that as I think Max from World well Done Books put it, explores the human spirit perfectly. I love this book. I only wish I had had more time to process it in the year 2014. The next honorable mention goes to Landline by Rainbow Rowell. I feel like a top books list on my channel is incomplete without a Rainbow Rowell book. I know that she's not the most beloved author in the literary circles here on booktube. This book just reaffirmed what I already knew. Rainbow Rowell writes beautifully flawed characters in beautifully flawed situations in a charming and fun way. Rainbow Rowell will be a auto-buy author for me for the foreseeable future. <laughs> my next honorable mention is The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. This is just a matter of the right book at the right time. It is a book about people who love books. It's about the power of love and literature, and I completely devoured it. My last honorable mention is the House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. This was a very important book for me. As I said every time I mentioned this book, this book just exuded the essence of my mother. My, my mother is a Mexican-American woman who was raised in an urban area in Southern California. While this book takes place in Chicago, I couldn't help but just feel like I was reading about my mother's childhood. Although I know it's not a perfect reflection of her childhood, I it reminded me of her so much that I, I couldn't make a video talking about the books of 2014 without mentioning this book. Now on to the top 10 books of 2014. I tried to rate these the best that I could, but it, this is subject to change, but here's what you get now. Number 10 is Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley. This is a standalone graphic novel by the author of Scott Pilgrim, which I absolutely adored. I love Brian Lee O'Malley's sarcasm, his snark, and his wit because it, it has infused in it just the right amount of cheesiness and heart. And just his art style alone is enough for me to have this book on my top 10 list. But the thing that surprised me the most about this book was the absolutely wonderful portrayal of female friendship that I wasn't, it came out of nowhere. It was totally unexpected. And I look forward to one day owning this book so I can peruse it at my whim. Coming in at number nine is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is another one that I know if I had more time to process it, it would be higher on the list. But this book was again, a book, the perfect book at the perfect time and the right amount of hype around it and I just was completely enthralled in this story. I was I was into it from page one. I loved the ideas that it explored, especially with the ideas of art and fame and that being the essence of humanity. At least that's what I took away from it and I absolutely adored it and I, I am definitely going to read it again in the future so that I can get every bit of goodness out of it that I possibly can. Coming in at number eight, we have Bureau Rights by Hannah Kent. I read this back in January or February of 2014, and it is a beautiful, haunting piece of historical fiction based on the final account of capital punishment in Iceland. Since it is based on true events, you know how the book is going to end, but the way that Hannah Kent writes it, the way that she fleshes out the characters, you hope and pray that history has changed. And I think the thing that stuck with me the most about this book was Hannah Kent talking about how she, the, one of the main reasons she wanted to tell this story was because the woman who this main character is based on was totally villainized in all accounts and she almost gave this woman a second life, an alternate perspective, and I loved that. Coming in at number seven, we have The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. This book is marketed as a young adult book, but 
I think it transcends that categorization. I think that it's a an excellent piece of historical fiction, magical realism, literary fiction, dare I say, that explores loss and love and family in the most elegant, magical way. But what makes it even better is this, this beautiful exploration of strong women, women and not just typical idea of being a strong woman or being like a man. It's all these different ways that you can deal with grief and rise above out of it. It just has so much to offer. And as I've me mentioned pre in previous videos, this is definitely one that I need to revisit because I know that there's so much more that I missed upon first reading. Coming in at number six, we have The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This was actually the very first book that I read in 2014. And I can't lie, although it is a beautifully written book, centered around books, I think that the reading experience is what makes this book so memorable to me. At the beginning of 2014, I came out down with a terrible cold, maybe even a flu, because I do remember a few days of fevery haziness. This book was like the chicken noodle soup. I spent so many days with this book. I had to take a week off of work because of the sickness, and this book was my dearest friend. It's just another case of reading exactly what I needed to at the exact right time. Um, it has elements of mystery and romance, and as I said, the power of literature and family, it all centered in this beautiful setting of Barcelona, Spain. Everything about this book was perfect at the time, and it's one that I hesitate to continue on in its series because I don't want it to lose its magic. Coming in at number five, my most recent read on this list is Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. I actually listened to this on audiobook and it was a perfect experience. This is such an important book. I've heard mixed things about what it is. It's either an autobiographical middle grade novel written in verse or it is a memoir targeted towards middle grade written in verse. Either way, it tells the story of Jacqueline Woodson as a child and being a brown girl and living in the contrasting worlds of the South in America and Brooklyn, New York, but also her pursuits of being a writer and her love of her family. And I was listening to this on audiobook and it was only four hours long, but I listened to it all in one sitting. I planned on taking breaks and doing other things, but I did housework for four hours just so that I could listen to this book. And when it came close to the end, I was legitimately heartbroken that this book had to end. It's a very important read and one that I think everyone needs to read. Coming in at number four on my list is Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. This was another one of the first books that I read in 2014 and I initially didn't think that I would like this book, if I'm completely honest. It's a book written in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and it's about a girl, and I had all of these stupid ideas about what this book was gonna be like, and I was completely wrong. It's this co cozy, charming, coming-of-age story of this intelligent, bright, rambunctious, curious young woman as she grows into adulthood. The thing that surprised me and stuck with me the most about this book, though, is that in the end, she is a strong woman that is ambitious and pursuing her career, but she's also willing to make a sacrifice for the people that she loves and that you can still be a strong woman and make sacrifices for your family is just something that I loved about this book and hope that that vibe continues on in the series so that as I continue on in it during the upcoming year. Coming in at number three, I have The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine Valente, the first book in the Fairyland series. I made a video very recently where I gushed about this book for six minutes, so if you want to hear how much I love it, you're definitely welcome to check this out. But this book is a wonderful homage to all the children's classics with still maintaining its own uniqueness and poignancy and the writing is to die for. This one took me completely by surprise but it's easily one of my favorite books, easily one of my favorite series. I don't want to finish it because I don't want it to end. Coming in at number two is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Again, another book that I read towards the beginning of the year but that totally captivated me. It also made me realize how much I love the idea of storytelling and stories within stories. It's amazing the, the way that he portrays the power of words and the power of the impressions we get from people based on things that other people say, but also it's just this fantastical story about this arrogant but lovable guy that you can't help but root for who is also mysterious and it has this wonderful boarding school magic setting and how can I not love this book? I absolutely adore this book. I read the sequel to it as well, but this one took the cake for sure. And I honestly, it's again another series that I don't want to end, so Patrick Rothfuss, you can take your time on the third one. I can wait. And now on to my favorite book of 2014. It's 
completely unoriginal, completely cliche, but completely true. My favorite book or books of 2014 are Saga. I read volumes one, two, and three in 2014 and read, read the fourth volume in 2015. But this series absolutely blew me away. It took me by surprise. Again, it was a book that I read at the right time. I just wasn't reading. And then I, someone recommended reading graphic novels and he's like, oh, I keep hearing about this saga thing. Probably won't like it, but I'll give it a, I'll give it a freaking shot. And I, I devoured it and I have since read it all again in this beautiful edition. The plot is so rich and exciting and the characters are so well developed. Everything is just so well done. Don't even get me started on the art. Don't even get me started on the art. I fangirl about this art constantly. I think my husband is tired of me nudging him and making him look at various pieces of artwork in this book. I would say that this book isn't for everyone, but if you're okay with good story that has some graphic violence, some language, some sexual content, if you're okay with those things, I definitely recommend this book. I don't think that it's comparable to anything. People want to compare it to things and you're more than welcome to do that, but I think that this book is something unique and exciting and I'm glad to be in on it before it's over. And the most exciting part is it's going to be huge. It's going to be epic and I have no idea where it's going. And obviously I love this book no matter how unoriginal that selection is. This is my favorite book of 2014. And those are my top favorite books of 2014. I hope that did not disappoint. As always, please feel free to share your thoughts on any of the books that I mentioned here today in the comments below. And please let me know what some of your favorite reads of 2014 were. Also, if you make videos and you've made a video about your top favorite reads of 2014, link that down below as well and I'll check it out when I can. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye! Just the.